programmer and single father Dan Pearson's blog posts are popular with the public because of their well-written, quiet humor and wide range of topics from social trends to parenthood to human relationships. This post question, post address, very uncharacteristic of him, and very different from the others both in tone and in content, literally blew up the internet. What is wrong with fathers around the world according to Dan? Fathers, stop breaking your children, please. After the scene at the store I witnessed yesterday, I had to write this article. Please read it from beginning to end. The article is riddled with despair and anger for which I apologize to you, but speaking out about it was simply necessary. It needed to be shared, and everyone should read it. My son and I were standing in line when I saw a boy about 6 years old timidly turn to his father, asking him for ice cream on his way home. The father, however, measured him with a glance and flashed through his teeth for the little boy to feck off, and shut your mouth. The child quickly pressed himself against the wall and shut up. The line moved forward little by little, and the boy eventually came back up to his father, purring some childish song, as if he had forgotten his parents' recent anger. But the father turned to the child again, only to scold him for his noise. The boy sank down again and huddled against the wall. I was concerned and puzzled by the situation. How could this man not see what I saw? How could he not see the child over and over again? Why was he in such a hurry to cut his own son's feelings off at the root? Why didn't this daddy appreciate that glorious time when he could be everything to a child, the most important person in the world? There were three of us left in line when the boy headed toward his father again. This time the father, stepping out of line in a flash, squeezed his son's collarbones with force until he wrinkled in pain, and threatened him, you ever twitch or squeak again, you'll get it from me at home. Again the child huddled against the wall. This time he didn't make any more noise or move. He sank, his beautiful baby face bowed to the floor and lost all expression. He broke just like daddy wanted him to. It was easier to break a child than to mess with him. And then we wonder why so many children's lives are destroyed afterwards. I'll be blunt. After witnessing our relationship with my son, people often begin to sing my praises as a father who loves his son more than other fathers of their children. God damn it, I didn't understand that before, and I still can't understand it. Loving your son, raising him, touching him, playing with him, just being with him. Those are not tasks for super dads. That's what every father should be doing. Always. Without fail. There's nothing amazing about me I'm just a dad who loves his son and will do everything possible for his health, safety and well-being. I'd rather get a hammer on my finger or a rake in my face than humiliate my son. I'm a long way from being the perfect father. I'm afraid I will continue to be. But I'm a very, very good father, and my son will always feel that he can overcome any difficulties. Why? Because I've already taken care of that. I know how important a father is in a child's life and what he can do to build a kid's confidence. I understand that everything I do or say will be absorbed by the child for the future benefit or detriment. Why some fathers don't get it is what I don't understand. Fathers, I appeal to you. Don't you get a warm feeling, when you see your child in the morning, or when you come home from work? Don't you realize, that a child's entire self-esteem may depend on the facial expression with which you respond to them? Do you realize, that a child becomes what you call them? If you constantly hang the same label on a person, sooner or later that person will start to conform to it. Has your child really just bumped up like I've never seen before in my life? Was it really the most ridiculous thing you could have done? Do you really believe that your child is an idiot? He believes it now. Think about it. He believes what you say. Now give yourself a pat on the back. Who would believe you fathers that getting away from the TV or computer for 20 minutes to play with your child is an impossible task. And you need to play with your child every day. Don't you realize that your son's or daughter's trust in you depends on whether or not you play with him, and on how involved you are in your shared play. Can you imagine the amount of harm you do to your child just by not playing with him or her?